So, on December 12th, 1980, The Clash released a triple album. This one, Sand and Easter. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's a very political album. Right now, we can hear Washington Bullets playing, and that's one of the more political songs on what is already a fairly political um, album. Uh, they were making a political statement with it, not just about supporting left-wing revolutionaries around the world, not including the then Soviet Union or China, who they directly criticize in this song, um, but other ones including um, in uh, Cuba, in Nicaragua, the Sandinistas under Daniel Ortega, and uh, also singing about um, other areas where the US has interfered, for example, in um, Chile. So, um, very political. Uh, I remember when I was growing up, my mum had a friend who went to help pick the coffee crops, which I thought was a super cool thing to do, you know, very, um, very engaged with uh, global politics. And Clash themselves were really keen to make this a triple album because they had a little beef with their record company, CBS. And so they insisted on a triple album, as a result of which they had to forego, I think, the first £200,000 worth of royalties, plus a whole load more from their worldwide sales. But they did it anyway to kind of give it to the man a little bit. And then you kind of got to respect that. Um, so I just thought, ah, oh, I really want to uh, come up with a, a cocktail that will mark that. So um, that's why I'm coming up with the Sandinista uh, cocktail. It's Sandinista with an exclamation mark. So even though the album is about, um, well, it includes elements of talking about the, the uh, Sandinistas and also even its record label is a, uh, an acronym of the, um, of the party. This is about the album. And, uh, but nonetheless, there's going to be a few elements in it that remind us of uh, Latin America and Nicaragua, especially thinking about the coffee. So here we go. Let's just go ahead and make it. Uh, at its base is a rye whiskey. I'm using a hundred proof rye whiskey. I mean, ideally, given the song playing now, I should have used bullet rye, but actually I quite like old forester rye and I'm going to use that. Have two ounces of this going into a nice filled stirring glass. One and two. Second ingredient is mezcal because what I really want is some of that sort. I want the, the bite of the rye, but also the, the smokiness of the uh, mezcal in some ways, a bit like the uh, Washington Bullets, a bit like the cordite, the, the, the gunpowder, the, the flash from a gun, the sort of smoke you get afterwards. I'm probably just thinking of cap guns and the little whiff of smoke you get afterwards. But in any case, an ounce of this. Oh, and actually extra interesting because the, uh, or maybe not interesting, maybe more appropriate, given that Joe Strummer then went to form the Mescaleros after the clash um, broke up. So and now here where we get the uh, coffee in there as well, I have this uh, Capali, which is a coffee liqueur uh, from Mexico, I believe. Uh, yep, it is Mexican. Um, it's a bit like Kahlua. So if you want to have Kahlua, go for Kahlua. I kind of like this. I kind of like the shape of the bowl and I like the fact it's not Kahlua, I suppose, you know. I, are we trying to get away from commercialized drinks? Yeah, no, not really, but it sort of fits nonetheless. And you just want a half ounce of that, like so. And then we've got some bananas as well. And, and I don't really want to get into what happened to the revolution in Nicaragua um, in the years that followed. Uh, I'm, I don't want to throw around a term like a banana republic or anything like that, although the uh, leadership there is remarkably problematic and has been for a while now and sort of somewhat removed from the uh, left wing, uh, somehow romantic revolutionary image that we often had of them. Um, so I am using some of this Giffard uh, Banane du Brazil, so a banana liqueur. You can use, for example, the De Kuiper one. I find that a bit too sweet, personally, for this cocktail. Love it in other things, like in a banana rack, for example. But in this one, I wanted something a little more nuanced, and this really gives it. So we're gonna put another half an ounce of that into our stirring glass. And then I just want some of my um, Aztec chocolate bitters. I, it just brings the whole uh, drink together a little bit. So. We'll stick that in there. Not as Aztec chocolate bitters. I mean, it's it's also Mesoamerican. So, yeah, maybe this is all 
part of the concoction that I'm coming here, given the, the focus. I mean, as you know, a lot of Clash songs have uh, Spanish lyrics in them uh, or sing about Spain or Latin America. Uh, very political band. I mean, I'm going to stick with the idea, the only band that mattered. Uh, is it uh, the right epithet? I don't know. I like it. I like the Clash. And I also like this drink. And I'm going to happily drink this to commemorate the release of that triple uneven, a triple and uneven album. But there are moments of brilliance, moments of craziness, moments of fun. It's got it all. Um, and at 141 minutes, it will certainly keep you occupied for a while. I think one of the band members said uh, it was an album for someone who maybe works on an oil rig who didn't get to a record store very often. I, the idea being they could listen to it for quite a long time because it's a long album. Um, and they only did the triple album because they were mad that they didn't get London calling out as a double uh, originally. So uh, that's them sticking it to the man. All right, this is smelling great. Let's get this. I've got a, a, a double old fashioned glass here with a single large ice cube in it. I'm just going to pour that in. And again, this is a, just a gorgeous um, nut brown color, I suppose would be the right way to it. Just the one garnish. I think a nice thick, twist of orange just you know express the oils out a little bit really does the trick just like that and we'll put the orange in there and uh well let's see what we've got oh yes viva la revolution sandinista baby cheers <laughs> 